Breaking news. Zelensky accuses Russia of endangering the lives of 2 million people by threatening the stability of a dam in Ukraine. According to Zelensky, Russia is to blame. According to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, the ecological disaster brought on by the breach of the Novokhovka Dam and the subsequent release of highly polluted water into the Black Sea has become a global problem. Zelensky claims that the sewage, oil, chemicals, and likely anthrax from animal burial places were carried by the floodwaters that swept through the lower Dnipro River Valley. At least two anthrax graves can be found in the area currently under temporary control. According to what Zelensky said in an online discussion with eco-activists, they aren't up to date on the latest happenings in these areas. Inundating 600 square kilometers of land, the Russians destroyed a massive dam over the river. While both Ukraine and Russia have been blamed, it has yet to be determined who was actually responsible for the dam's destruction. Zelensky estimates that in addition to the 100,000 people living downstream, 50,000 hectares of forest were flooded, and that 20,000 animals and 10,000 birds were doomed to extinction. He estimated that 2 million animals would be in danger if the contaminated water were to spread. Water pollution and poisoning from the flooded area spread rapidly through the ground and into the rivers, eventually contaminating the Black Sea. That means it can't be happening anywhere else. He claimed that the entire world was linked together. The president of Ukraine visited the region after devastating floods swept away dozens of towns and parts of the regional capital, Kherson. The Novokhovka government, which receives support from Moscow, reports that six people have died as a result of the floods. The president laid the blame on Russian strongman Vladimir Putin, saying the disaster at the Kahovka Dam was caused by humans and not the result of global warming. Zelensky reported casualties and continued shelling of areas where flood victims were being evacuated from by Russian invaders. He warned that protecting oneself from Russian fire was just as important as protecting the environment from Russian aggression. He also noted that no one has left the occupied part of the land, where flooding has affected about a dozen settlements. People have spent a second day without access to food, water, or medical care while stranded on rooftops due to a water intrusion. It is currently unknown how many people have been killed or injured. As a result of the Russian terrorist attack, President Zelensky said, thousands of ecological systems had been destroyed or brought to the brink of extinction, including the loss of life in more than 30 settlements, the flooding of fuel storage facilities, chemical and fertilizer warehouses, animal graveyards, and the sweeping of sewage effluent into the water. He noted that over 50,000 hectares of forest had been flooded and that at least half of them would be lost. Thousands of birds and at least 20,000 other wild animals are in immediate danger of extinction. There is no doubt that the Kahovka Reservoir has become a vast cemetery for countless species. Zelensky rejects any help from supranational bodies. He emphasized that the number of casualties would rise the longer international organizations did not help the people living in the territory that was occupied by Russia. Supporters of Ukraine, he urged, should put pressure on international organizations to make sure the full extent of the damage caused by the disaster is repaired. To ensure that his country is not abandoned in the face of this disaster, the president also mentioned that Ukraine is in the process of forming a specialized group to unite the globe in holding Russia accountable for this ecological destruction. Zelensky had criticized the United Nations and the Red Cross for their inaction during the floods. While praising international groups for their work on the right bank, he noted that those groups had no physical presence in the Russian-controlled area, where many people were still stranded. Ukraine's efforts to contain the destruction wrought by the dam's collapse coincided with heightened fighting along the border with Russian occupation troops. According to reports, a large Ukrainian force, armed with Western-made tanks and other weapons, was making a concerted push south of Zaporizhia toward a Russian supply base in the town of Tokmak. A spokesperson for the Ukrainian general staff said they were unaware of reports that Kyiv's long-awaited counteroffensive had begun despite claims made by unnamed U.S. and Ukrainian officials in the U.S. press. So, whose fault is it? Zelensky has always put the blame for the war and its effects on Russia.
He should have known that going against Russia and letting the United States exert power over Ukraine would be bad for Ukraine and international politics. Moreover, the United States has a history of exploiting countries and then abandoning them in times of crisis, when they are most in need of assistance.